This video was sponsored by Keeps, but I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on in the video. Ever since I was a little boy, I've been standing on riverbanks, staring out into the open water, watching people effortlessly float by, wishing that I was one of those people. Not standing on the bank observing, but out on the water, floating, without a care in the world. Some people spend their whole life wishing. I am not one of those people. I was bound to make this happen. So I headed out into the water and floating was a little harder than I anticipated. In fact, it was really hard. I tried some various different methods to get myself going down river, but in the end, it just was no good. If I really wanted to be out on the water, I was gonna have to figure out another way. An old pallet and an oar just wasn't gonna cut it. So I sat down and began to think, what could I do? Oh, I know. I could build my own boat. Yeah, let's do that. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I've never built a boat before. I know nothing about boats, and I know nothing about what I'm doing. So I got online and bought some plans. All 57 pages of them. I was pretty scared. I've never used plans before. I didn't know if I could do this. I was stressed out. I was worried. How could I use plans? I make stuff up as I go along. But then I decided to get over myself and get to work. The first thing the plan said to do was to cut out my hull panels. Now, I needed to cut these out from a 16 foot by 4 foot sheet of marine grade plywood. There's only one problem. You can't really get 16 foot sheets of plywood. So the first real step was to make a 16 foot sheet of plywood. Now I found a place up in Washington where I could get marine grade Akume plywood and they would CNC puzzle piece carve out the ends so that I could actually just glue them together and make my full 16 foot sheets. But it wasn't as simple as just gluing two 8 foot sheets together. Because the CNC half lap puzzle piece thingamabob overhangs into the sheet, in order to get 16 feet I actually needed three 4 by 8 sheets. So the first thing I had to do was cut down my two end pieces so that when I glued everything up, I would net a total of 16 feet. This is quarter inch ply, and that's what's recommended on the plans to make up the hull. So after cutting down both of my outside pieces, I moved my workbenches around to give myself a nice long work surface. Yes, underneath my workbench was disgusting. Leave me alone. And I laid out the sheets on top in the direction that they needed to be glued up. Next, I created a little gluing surface. I found this old piece of butcher block just laying around in my shop, and I decided it was the perfect surface to join my two sides. So I coated the entire thing in wax paper, and then I mixed up some epoxy. To glue my sheets together, I'm using Total Boat's High Performance Epoxy. It's a two-part mix with the hardener and the resin component. So after mixing everything up, I started coating my two joints thoroughly with a nice layer of epoxy. Making sure to hit all my surfaces and get all my nooks, crannies, and edges. Kind of like when I take a bath. Then after that, I simply, well, just hooked them together. Just like a puzzle. Then I used a block and a hammer to tap everything into place and I coated the top with a nice layer of wax paper to keep all of my clamping calls from sticking to the plywood. That would be a mess, and I don't like messes. The nice thing about the whole cnc half-lap puzzle piece thing is they really do hook together like a puzzle piece, so I didn't need a whole lot of weight on them while they dried, but I threw a walnut and a couple oak clamping calls down just to add a little extra weight, 
and then the next morning I came out and removed them to see how my seam turned out. And it turned out beautifully, I'm happy to report. I couldn't help but sand off the excess epoxy just to see how the whole thing was going to look. And, well, it looked like a puzzle pieced together piece of plywood, which is exactly what I was going for, so great. So with one seam done, I moved on to the other end and I did my last seam to net my 16 foot sheet of plywood. While that was drying up, I decided to move over and start working on my transom. Now, if you don't know what a transom is, that's okay, neither did I. It's a nautical term for the back portion of a boat where the two side walls or hull comes together and attaches to. So I made my transom, according to the plans, out of three quarter inch marine grade ply. After drawing out the general shape, I cut out my beveled edges using the track saw, and then I braced the entire transom with ash. Fun fact, the entire ribbing and internal structure of this boat will be made in ash. This is also the first time I've ever used ash, so there's a lot of firsts for me on this one. Next, after finishing my transom, I needed to make my bow stem, another nautical term for the front portion of the boat where the two side walls will attach at the front. So you got the transom in the back, bow stem at the front, and a boat in the middle, we hope. The transom was simply made out of a solid piece of eight quarter ash cut on the table saw to have a 45 degree bevel on either side with a little quarter inch strip in the middle that will make up the very front of the ship or boat or dinghy, whatever you want to call this thing. Do you ever get the feeling when you're working in your shop that you're being watched? I feel that way all the time. So with my transom and bow stem done, I unclamped the second seam on my side hull pieces. And just like that, I had made myself a 16 foot sheet of quarter inch Akume marine grade plywood that I could now use to cut out my hull panels. I also glued up a 14 foot piece of ply for the bottom of the boat, but we won't quite get to that in this video. Next, I had to cut out my hull panels. Now it says in the plans to freehand this on the table saw. Freehand a 16 foot sheet of ply on the table saw. That just seemed dumb, so I wasn't gonna do that. But I had a better idea. Instead, I got two pieces of rigid foam insulation from the big box store, and I just laid them down on my floor to make a nice cutting surface. Then I simply dropped my 16 foot sheet of ply onto that rigid foam insulation and I mapped out my two hull pieces using a chalk line. Chalk lines are fun, but they're also kind of messy. And then I made what I like to call the monster track. I connected all of my track saw pieces together to make one giant 18 foot long piece of track and I just cut out all the hull pieces with the track saw. I did not envy trying to run this 16 foot piece through the table saw freehand. Like I said, that just seemed dumb. And this worked great, so I was pretty happy. Then after I got my lengthwise cut, my long cut, my cut long ways done, I trimmed down all the sides to start, well, making it look like a boat. Easy and nice like a bowl of rice. I like to try and throw one catchphrase into all my videos, so that was the catchphrase for this video. And with that, my hull panels were cut to shape. The only thing left to do was to coat them in epoxy. Now, this is what it's said to do in the plans, to coat each side in epoxy to add some rigidity and to also help waterproof the pieces. But it also said it was an optional step. That always confuses me. Should I do it or should I not do it? So I decided to be on the safe side and just go ahead and do it. So again, I started mixing up some Total Boat high performance epoxy and I just started smearing it all over the place. It also said in the plans not to worry if this isn't perfect because you're gonna sand it all down afterwards. So we're gonna coat the whole thing in epoxy and then 
sand it all down. Great. That sounds like so much fun. Thanks, boat plans. You're really making me happy. But, to be honest, it really wasn't too bad. And before long, I had uh, the first side nicely coated in epoxy. So after that cured, I flipped them over, and yep, you guessed it, I coated the other side with epoxy. Like this. It's actually kind of fun. Feels like you're smearing around a booger. Then once both sides were cure, I just lightly sanded to get rid of all of the bumps and ridges and imperfection and dust and hair and, you know, all that jazz that lands on epoxy in the eight hours or so it takes to cure. And just like that, my two side panels were done for now. And I was ready to start working on my rib pieces. This video was sponsored by Keeps. Did you know that two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? I'm 33. <sighs> but the best thing to do is to take care of it before it's a problem. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss treatments that are out there. Some of you may have tried these before, but I guarantee you haven't tried them for these prices. Keeps has revolutionized the way that men are treated for hair loss. They make it super simple, they deliver your medication every three months, so you can say goodbye to all those awkward doctor's visits or pharmacy checkout lines. It just shows up at your door. You just get online, talk to one of their doctors, they get you all set up. So if you're ready to take action to prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash bourbonmoth or click the link in my video description and get 50% off your first order. That's keeps.com slash bourbonmoth. Don't wait. Hair loss is a real thing. Now, let's get back to building a boat. With our hall panels all done and epoxied, it was time to start working on our rib construction. Now this is kind of a long process because, well, there's nine ribs in total. They're all unique in size, shape, and angle. So I had to start by cutting all of my rough stock pieces with a bevel on the outside on the table saw. And then I had to freehand this diagonal cut that would make up my two outer pieces of each rib. This is a little sketchy cutting freehand at an angle on the table saw, but that's what the plan said to do, so I'm gonna do it. It also said not to worry about the cut not being perfect on the inside because it's on the inside and nothing's gonna attach to it and heck, we'll clean that up later with the sander and all that jazz. Next, I had to lay out each individual rib to get the right angle, height, width, all that jazz. So I traced out each rib onto a template piece of MDF, paying very close attention to the plans because did I mention that every single rib is completely different? So there's not a lot of margin for error here. So with each rib, I first traced it out onto the template and then I laid out the actual ash hardwood stock on top and aligned it perfectly with my traced lines. Then all I had to do was mark all my angles and cuts onto each piece and then I took them over to the chop saw and I cut each compound angle over there. Then I brought them back over to my template, dropped them back in place and double checked that everything lined up correctly and, well, looked like it was supposed to look. Which, to be honest, I don't know how it's supposed to look. I've never done this before, so I'm really flying off the seat of my pants right now. So, I really hope this all comes together. And when I got one done, I did another one. This step, that step, over and over and over again. Until before long, I had what I hoped would be nine perfect ribs. The last step was to take the base of each rib and cut a half circle into the bottom of each piece. These are actually my drain holes so that water can flow from the front to the back in the boat and all that fun stuff. And then I uh, pre-sanded each piece because you know I love pre-sanding. Have I mentioned how much I actually hate sanding? 
Anyways, after sanding with a power sander, I just knocked all my edges and corners down by hand. And before long, I had the rough pieces for nine individual ribs. All unique and all hopefully going to make up the, you know, inner workings of my boat. I'm at a loss for the correct terms with a lot of this stuff because did I mention I've never done this before? I also feel like I keep saying the last step is when there is no last step. At least I can't see a last step anytime soon. Anyways, next I hooked all the rib pieces together. Traditionally they are screwed together and glued together. So after pre-drilling with a countersink bit, I added a little 3M5200 marine epoxy gooey stuff to each joint and I added three one and a quarter inch screws. Now I'm only adding three, not four, because I'm actually gonna be cutting a little notch in that bottom left hand corner on each rib piece. This is the chine notch. I know, I kinda sounded like I knew what I was talking about there, but I don't. The chine notch is this little notch where the chine sits in. A chine is a piece of wood that will internally connect all the ribs, I think. I, I don't know. But anyways, after getting all of my pieces screwed together, I started, you know, having ribs for the boat. So I just kept going until all nine of my rib pieces were complete. Screwing and gluing and gluing and screwing, you know, until I got these things in this shape. And then I had to cut those chine notches that I was talking about. Now I'm sure there's a better way to do this, maybe on the table saw, but that seemed a little sketchy and I didn't want you guys to yell at me for being unsafe on the table saw. So I decided just to cut all the chine notches by hand. It took a little while, but it really wasn't that bad and if you're careful with the pole saw, you can actually get a pretty nice clean cut. I just cleaned them up a little bit with the chisel where they needed it and before long I had all nine of my ribs chined. All nine, chine, chine nine, that kind of rhymes. And I couldn't help but lay them out on the floor just to get a general idea of the overall shape of the boat. Like I said, each rib is unique, and so they go, you know, in and out and then back in again. Look, it's almost a boat. At this point, we're almost ready to start hooking this together. I know, I said we're, it's just a habit. I'm going to. You're not helping. Believe me, I know you're not helping because I had to do the whole thing myself. But before we do that, we had to, see I did it again, I had to mark out where all the ribs were going to land on my hull pieces. So let's review. We have our transom that will be the back. We have our bow stem that will be the front. We have our two side panels that will make up either side of the boat and our ribs will connect everything in between. So, the only thing left to do was to calm myself, take a deep breath, and just pray like crazy that this whole thing's gonna go together the way it should. I really have no clue the outcome. Let's just hope. So first, I apply a liberal coating of that 5200 marine epoxy adhesive stuff and I attach my first side wall to the bow stem. Now I already pre-marked out a drill pattern to align all my screws, but once I get the side panel in place, I just tacked it with a few staples. These are just to hold it in place because I'm working alone and I didn't want it to move around while I pre-drilled all my holes with that countersink bit. Once all my holes were pre-drilled, I sank an insane amount of one and a half inch or one inch screws, I don't remember, into the bow stem to hold it in place. Just like that. Next, I had to attach the second sidewall piece. This was a little trickier because it had to be up at an angle, and like I said, I was working by myself. But nothing a few sawhorses and a chair won't accomplish. Again, I applied a liberal amount of that 5200 white gooey stuff. And after smearing it around with a putty knife, like I know what I'm doing, even though I don't, 
I position my second sidewall piece and I tack it in place. Again, just to keep it from moving while I get my screws and holes all drilled and such. Then I pre-drilled what seems like five million holes into my quarter inch sheet of ply and I added my screws. I'm not gonna lie, this part was really satisfying. It just felt fun to sink all those screws in there. I don't use screws a lot, so I enjoy it when I get to. Then after all my screws were in place, it was time to move to the back of the boat and attach my transom. Believe it or not, I attached this in the exact same way. A little of that gooey white stuff. I tack it in place to keep it from moving. I drilled a few countersunk holes and then I added all my screws. More screws. So many screws. These aren't actually going to be visible in the final product. This will all get trimmed out and covered up, but that's what the plans say to do, so I'm going with it. At this point, this is what the boat looks like. Attached in the front, attached on one side in the back. Next, I was supposed to attach my middle rib, rib number five, on one side. And then after it's attached on one side, I was supposed to bend the plywood around and attach it on the other side. So, I'm just trying to follow instructions here. So I'm just, I'm just doing what I'm told. Is it right? I don't know, but it is kind of starting to look like a boat. And just when I was getting going, wouldn't you believe it, the foreman stops by again, just to say hi. And he was pretty excited too. He wanted to climb in and take it for a ride. I tried to tell him it wasn't done yet, but he was convinced it would float. I wasn't so convinced. After attaching the rib on the second side, now it was finally time to attach the back and get the final shape of the boat. So I applied some more of that slimy stuff to the back, tacked it in place. You guys have seen this before. This is like, what, the fourth time I've done this exact same thing? And I screwed it in. Next, the plan say, I'm gonna keep saying the plans say, just so you can blame the plans and not me if some boat builder out there thinks I'm doing this wrong. Anyways, the plans say to hang the whole thing from the ceiling. This is supposed to make the boat kind of sag and take on its final shape and curve. So I hung it from the ceiling and then I just started throwing in all my ribs. This seems like a really complicated process, but it's actually pretty simple. All my ribs are already cut and beveled to the right angle to fit my hull, so I just stick them in, clamp them down, and I screw them in place according to my pre-marked lines on the outside of my hull. With each rib, I got just a little bit more excited. For two reasons, really. One, because my ribs were fitting the way they were supposed to, which I was really nervous about because, like I said, they're all unique and there's a lot of angles involved. But two, because with each rib I installed, it was starting to look more and more like a boat. That was my goal, to build a boat. I didn't care what it looked like. As long as it floated better than that pallet, I was gonna be happy. And before long, I had all of my ribs installed and I was well on my way. Well on my way to that free floating adventure I've longed for ever since I was, well, it was like, what, an hour ago when I was down by the river? Anyways, it was looking like a boat, and I was excited. I still have a long ways to go, but I'm happy with the progress thus far. I hope you'll come back and check out the next videos and see where this little project ends up. Hopefully the next time I float down the river, I don't get so wet. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed episode one of my boat building series. There's gonna be at least two more episodes where I finish this puppy. So stay tuned, they'll come out in the coming weeks. But for now, maybe you should check out this video, or that video, or this video, or that video. I hope that worked. I, I put those in afterwards, so I never know if my hands are going in the right place. Oh, and subscribe, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. There's plans on my website. Okay, not for the boat, but for other stuff. Anyways, you, you'll, you'll figure it out.